She still has two upside plays that should weather the storm. Let's welcome in Lisa Ellis, senior equity analyst and partner at Moffitt Nathanson. Great to have you back, Lisa. Do you want to just start by responding to this same question, which is why have these stocks been hit so much? Some would argue, ah, it's just liquidity, it's just the Fed, nothing macro or, or nothing company specific here. Yeah, it's a lot of factors. Uh, certainly liquidity in the Fed. I mean, these are in many cases high growth, um, unprofitable or less profitable firms. And so they've been caught up in the general pullback. Um, but in addition, there are certainly concerns about inflation, uh, which hits the middle income consumer very heavily, and they are the target market typically for BNPL. In addition, regulatory concerns, uh, for all of the reasons I just highlighted a minute ago, the CFPB is starting to lean in a bit on putting some regulatory guardrails around these products, uh, which is creating a lot of uncertainty around the stocks. Um, and then, of course, there's the questions about the credit books. Um, the, the underlying risk models of these firms may be fantastic, but they may not be fantastic. Right. No one knows. They haven't been through a credit cycle. So who do you think is best positioned amongst the existing sort of standing uh, names that we're talking about? Well, we like Block the best. You know, Block bought Afterpay, the big Australian player. Um, and we like that one for a couple of reasons. One, just on a standalone basis, Afterpay uh, is really only in the very short duration, you know, pay in four model type of loans. So they have very limited downside risk in their models, uh, in their model, right? They're not in these longer duration, you know, kind of installment loans. They're really just the pay in four model. And then in addition to that, they're obviously incorporated into the broader uh, block company. And there's a lot of just natural synergy um, that might buffer some of the slowdown in Afterpay just coming in from the synergy uh, of integrating Afterpay into block. Um, on the flip side, we're a little more cautious on a firm. Uh, for the reasons I highlighted, as much as we're pretty positive on the outlook for BNPL as an offering, a credit offering over the medium to long term, it's been very innovative. Consumers really like it. We do see some of these near term um, headwinds, regulatory inflation, and then also just general pricing pressure, particularly in the U.S. market, where it's gotten quite competitive over the last couple of years. And what do you expect is going to come down from regulators here? Uh, so what we're likely to see at a minimum, I think, you know, we, we believe is clarity on the marketing language, uh, you know, as we've seen in the past with credit cards, right, where you have to be super clear with consumers about exactly what they're signing up for around late fees, interest, you know, whether it's going to show up on your credit score or not. So just, you know, sometimes the messaging can make you feel like you're getting, you know, a discount on a product when in fact you're not getting a discount, you're just paying for it in multiple installments. So at a minimum, the CFPB just providing some clarity around guidelines and then probably also clarity around when and when not these products have to be reported to the credit bureaus. Uh, is it always, is it some of the time as you know, as the prior uh, guest highlighted, it's a bit inconsistent across the firms right now. And so for consumers, you know, they're dealing with a lot of uncertainty about whether or not this is going to affect my credit score or not. And if you're sort of given the cautiousness on a firm and the reasons why you're bullish on block, do you think a firm will end up as part of a larger company? <laughs> well, uh, I, I think there's plenty of suitors, uh, plenty of companies that would be very interested in a firm because they've got fantastic uh, user consumer base. They've got great partnerships with Amazon, um, with Shopify, for example. Uh, and the question will be more one probably to management of whether or not they would be willing to sell or whether they uh, prefer to try to go it alone. I mean, we think somebody like a American Express, for example, would make a fantastic suitor for somebody like a, a firm. Um, but many, you know, the, many, any of the traditional credit card issuers as well could potentially be suitors or somebody like a PayPal even, for example. I mean, the list goes on and on. It's probably more in the hands of, of a firm's management and board, you know, their interest or willingness to go in that direction. Absolutely. But again, could be a catalyst, but I'm sure not many investors want to speculate too much on that front. Lisa, thanks for all your thoughts today. Good to see you again. Thanks, Kelly. Lisa Ellis with Moffat Nathanson.